in the last episode, we were talking about mental health stigma and we were talking about what exactly it is, how it manifests itself in our society and what happens to people when there's mental health stigma in the society that they live in. If you have not listened to that episode, please go and listen to it so that you can understand some of the main basic concepts of mental health stigma. And then come and listen to this episode where we are talking about how to reduce mental health stigma. In my opinion, there are five ways we can reduce mental health stigma. I am going to go through them very quickly, hopefully. I usually say that in the beginning of episodes and then I end up doing a 30-minute episode. Uh, forgive me, I just have a lot to say. I hope it's useful. That's the most important thing. I hope it's useful. So let's talk about how you can reduce mental health stigma, either you as an individual or as a society, what you can do. The first thing that I believe we can do to reduce mental health stigma is to engage with people who share honest and factual information about the causes of mental illness and the way that mental illnesses are treated and the way they show up and the way they look like. Out here, we have so many people who are using mental health and mental illnesses as a fashion statement. People are sensationalizing and romanticizing mental illnesses for clout. We need to stop engaging with these accounts that are using mental health as a term just to sell us hoodies and workbooks and journals and some random merchandise. Just because somebody has a big account, I don't want you to think that they cannot be spreading misinformation about mental illness. There's a lot of misinformation and pop psychology and pseudoscience being pushed on the internet when it comes to mental health. A lot, a lot of it. People saying things for the sake of saying things. When people with big accounts start pushing out this kind of content, they are engaging in spreading mental health misinformation. And more people who are getting taught this mental health misinformation then perpetuate the mental health stigma. It matters where you get your information. It really does. Uh, just because somebody has a following does not make them a mental health expert. It does not make them a mental health professional. A big part of reducing mental health stigma is fact-checking information on the internet. It is calling out people who spread misinformation. It is asking people to quote their sources when they share mental health content, when they share mental health claims. It is asking people to share their credentials when they teach mental health on the internet. It is you becoming a critical thinker when it comes to the consumption of mental health information. And it is you following people who have credibility. And above and beyond everything, if you yourself have a platform, you need to use your platform responsibly. Many people take the information they find on the internet as gospel truth. It is sad, but it is true. And not everybody has the time or the luxury to fact check everything. So if you as an individual, you know you have the capacity, please fact check information before you spread it. And also, ask people to show their credentials. Don't just accept something on the internet just because somebody said it and they have a huge following. The second way of reducing mental health stigma is to be part of in-person and online conversations where people talk about mental health. I encourage you to engage with individuals who have lived experience of mental health challenges, listen to their personal experiences, listen to their personal stories through the various forms of expressions that they have, some of them are writers, some of them are artists, some of them are musicians, some of them are digital creators, some of them are in the media, some of them are doctors, some of them are nurses, some of them are in healthcare, some of them are lawyers, and they are everywhere. People with lived experience of mental health challenges are everywhere. And I encourage you to listen to them so that they can tell you their personal stories. And this is because, as we mentioned, if people don't know what mental health looks like, then they don't know how to end the stigma. They will continue believing in the lies that they see on the internet and the lies that they hear in their social circles. By humanizing mental health issues, we get to learn how to be empathetic when it comes to mental illnesses. We get to challenge the stereotypes that exist. We get diverse perspectives from people with lived experiences. And it also makes it easier for us to understand mental health in general. There's a lot of book knowledge when it comes to mental health, the one that you Google. But Google will never show you the things on the ground. And listening to people with lived experience is what will show you the things on the ground. Become very, very comfortable with the reality of mental illness. If you're not prepared to see all the manifestations of mental illnesses, then we are only conducting lip service. We need to understand that mental health conditions are very, very common. They are quite manageable with medication, with therapy, and other ways. And they are not a reflection of personal failure. Just because somebody is struggling with depression, it does not mean that they are a bad person. It does not mean that they did something wrong. It is an illness. 
I believe that more people should talk about um, their, their lived experiences with mental illness. And you yourself, you can start having these conversations even in your friend group. Be a conversation starter in your WhatsApp groups. I know you're in WhatsApp groups, many of them. Be a conversation starter. Be the first person to share quality mental health information. This helps in raising awareness because many people don't know enough about mental health. So if you are sharing quality information on your WhatsApp, in your stories, in your groups, um, in chats, if you're creating an open space where your friends can talk about mental health, even your family members, then you are raising awareness. You are beating stigma. You are shedding light on the secret that is mental illness. You yourself, you need to educate yourself. When you educate yourself, you are able to educate other people around you. And that way, we are able to raise the collective knowledge of mental illness and mental health in general to the people who are around us. The more you know, the more you share with your friends and families and colleagues, the more they share with you, the more they open up, and the more they teach you. So create a platform. Be a, be a platform yourself. Be somebody that other people can talk to about mental health and be a person that opens up conversations about mental health. Be the one to beat the stigma by being open about your own struggles and being open to hear other people's struggles. That is the second way that I think we can beat mental health stigma. The third way that I think we can beat mental health stigma is through media. The media needs to start showing people who are living and thriving even when they have been given a clinical diagnosis. Chimamata says that we need to be aware of the dangers of a single story. So the media, and social media especially, needs to show the full picture. We need to start showing the full story of mental health and mental illness. We can't just be showing one single story and it's the story of suffering and total paralysis and total struggle. If the media shows accurate information on mental health, if it showcases people who are living well and thriving in their families, in their careers, in everything that they do, even with a mental illness diagnosis, then the public, us, the people who are consuming the media, we are likely to start shedding our beliefs about what me mental illness looks like and what mental illness means. And one thing I am sure you have noticed is that in our current world, the problem is not that we lack information. The problem is misinformation. It is in the twisting of facts so that they can fit a narrative. The agenda must agenda. That is what we say on Twitter. X. Twix. So engage mental health experts. Give factual information. Do your research. Don't spread misinformation. Avoid pseudoscience and pop psychology. Stop diluting mental health information. Give it as it is. Don't chase social media clouds and engagements using stories that are sensational. Just report the reality of what the issue is when it comes to mental health. There are two media theories that I'm very passionate about, and one of them is the agenda setting theory and the cultivation theory. When you read those two theories, you're going to understand why I am so passionate about the media and the media taking responsibility for how it portrays stories uh, to the public. So, yeah, the media, not just traditional media, but also uh, social media as well. It's also us who are on the mtandao. The things we say, the things we do, the way we talk about mental illness and the way we talk about mental health, we have a responsibility. We need to take it. That's the third way I believe we can reduce mental health stigma. The fourth way that I believe that we can reduce mental health stigma is challenging the stigmatizing language that we use. As I have said before, words are powerful. Words mean something. For example, a lot of people talk about committing suicide. It is not committing suicide. We say people died by suicide because committing is basically perpetuating the belief that it is a crime. When you're describing mental health illnesses, use appropriate terms, use the right descriptions, call them what they are, stay accurate. Don't weaponize clinical terms. Don't use diagnosis to pathologize every human experience. Be accurate in the representations of the things that you're talking about. If you're sad, you're sad. You don't have to call it depression. If you are neat, you're neat. You don't have to call it OCD. There's something that one of my favorite psychologists on the internet, uh, her name is uh, Sirut Chavla. She says, everyone you dislike is not a narcissist. Every unpleasant experience is not trauma. Having needs does not make you codependent. Disagreement is not gaslighting. Conflict is not abuse. Taking offense is not being triggered. Everything does not need to be normalized. And I love the way she summarizes it because everything on the internet has taken on clinical terms. Now we don't talk about things as they are. We have to layer them with clinical terms and call them what they look like psychologically. And we forget that these are real problems 
that people have and if we use them to describe regular human experiences we are trivializing the suffering of the people who have been diagnosed with these issues so don't use clinical terms to pathologize the human experience do not use clinical terms to inflict the most normal aspects of life use appropriate language in regard to mental health and psychology so that you can reduce the stigma that is you doing your part don't call people mendawazimu because mendawazimu is not a term to be used as an insult catch yourself every time you're using a term that is not really the appropriate term for what you're talking about if you're sad you're sad you don't have to say you're depressed every time you're sad because we know sadness and depression are not the same thing and if that is something that you're curious about if you want to understand the difference between being feeling depressed and actually being depressed you can listen to the episode i did on that exact topic the last and definitely not least way of reducing mental health stigma in my opinion is having a lot of compassion for ourselves and for other people none of us are special none of us are unique enough that we will not get to experience emotional turmoil none of us are special enough that we will not get to go through difficult times none of us are so special that mental illness cannot affect us all of us are candidates for mental illness it does not discriminate it does not matter whether you are rich or you are poor it does not matter whether you are uh, whatever gender it does not matter whatever you believe in it does not matter where you live it does not matter who you are or who your parents are it does not matter where you come from or what level of education you have even me as a therapist i am a candidate for mental illness and that is just reality because mental illness does not discriminate so having a lot of compassion towards ourselves and towards other people who are suffering is a big big way of reducing the stigma it is a way to remind us that we are human and all of us can suffer in the same ways that other people are suffering we are not special and the moment you start seeing yourself as a regular human being who is likely to suffer just like every other person then you get to become more empathetic towards other people suffering so if you know that even you no matter who you are and what your background is you could become depressed when somebody tells you that they are depressed you are going to have a lot more empathy for them because you know it could be you it could be your family member it could be your sibling it could be the person that you love the most there's nothing unique about you that you wouldn't become mentally ill all of us can be and that is just reality of life let's have a lot of compassion towards ourselves let's have a lot of more compassion towards other people let's have a lot of compassion for humanity as a whole there's a lot of suffering in the world and we need each other i highly highly encourage all of us to become more comfortable with the reality of mental illnesses and to help in reducing the stigma it is our duty it is our responsibility as a society and it is doable we can end mental health stigma but we need to be actively involved in the ways that i have mentioned and in any other way that you think you can engage with people who offer honest and factual information about mental health conditions you can be part of conversations with people who have lived experience of mental illnesses you can hold the media accountable in reporting you can create honest and factual information on the internet using your social media you can change the language that you use you can start using accurate language and appropriate terms when describing mental illnesses and you can continue being compassionate towards yourself and towards other people so that's how i look at ending mental health stigma if there's something i've left out that you think would be useful in helping reduce mental health stigma in our society in our culture please leave it in the comment section i would love to hear it and i would love to hear your feedback about some of these things that i'm talking about in the next episode i'm going to be talking about mental health myths that are present in our culture that we need to demystify and yeah i'll see you in that episode take care of yourself and take care of your mental health